Hello everyone. Today we are going to derive the governing differential equation of your one-dimensional heat transfer system. The reason for deriving the governing differential equation is it enables you to tell what is the value of temperature at any position of the fin. Fin is the material that is used to conduct the heat from the hard source and it just dissipates the heat. So let me represent the hard source, the hard wall here. Let me say that this yellow here represents the engine wall. Attached to this engine wall is the pin fin. So I'll use this red color to represent the pin fin that is attached to this engine wall. Okay, let me define the geometric properties of this particular physical scenario. So here I am representing it by green. This pin fin has got a length of magnitude L. It has got a cross-sectional area of magnitude A. So these are the geometric properties. The cross-sectional area is usually it is circular in cross-section. Okay, now let me define the material property. This pin fin is made up of material that has got a thermal conductivity value of magnitude capital K. So thermal conductivity is a material property that varies from one material to another material. Right. Its unit is watt per meter squared per degree Celsius. But we will delve deeper into what is this thermal conductivity and we will wrap our mind around the physical meaning of thermal conductivity. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider a small region on this pen fin. I'm going to localize my attention on the small region on this pen fin. So again I'm representing that by this yellow region. So I'm going to localize my attention on the small region that is ha that has got a length of magnitude dx. And the small region is considered at a distance of x from the left extreme end. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent the magnified amplified view of this small region. So this is the small region that I have considered. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to consider onto this left of the small region another small region onto the right of the small region another small region so this small region has got a length of magnitude you see that it has got a length of magnitude dx and this small region that is considered onto the left it has got a length of magnitude del l small length and this small region that has got a length of magnitude del l all i'm interested in now is i'm interested in finding out the magnitude the rate of heat that is entering the small region. That is what I'm interested in. Now, I'm going to write an equation. What is the magnitude of heat that is entering through the small region? So, we, we are just going to, uh, let me try my best to give the intuitive, uh, intuitive feel, of, feel for the magnitude of heat that is entering through this particular region here, through this particular region here. You see? Now, intuitively, if you see very carefully, the magnitude of heat that is entering this region, that should be directly proportional to cross-sectional area. At least, that gives you an intuitive fee, right? Greater the cross-sectional area, greater the rate of heat passing, piercing right through that region, okay? And it should be directly proportional to the temperature difference between this point. Okay, I will use a different color. Maybe I will use a blue. So, look for blue here. The temperature difference between this point may be T1 and this point may be T2. So greater the temperature difference T1 and T2, right? If T2 is less than T1, then what happens is the heat from this region actually leaves this region and we have to assume that that heat leaves and tries to enter this region, right? So greater the temperature difference, greater the rate at which the heat passes right through that region so that is equal to the temperature difference so just a minute I'm sorry okay okay I will use okay here we go just give me a moment okay temperature difference T1 difference T2 greater this temperature difference greater the magnitude of heat entering right through that region and it should be inversely proportional to the length greater the length less the amount of heat that is piercing through that region okay that is the magnitude of heat that is entering right through that region now all i want you to consider is just make this del l very 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 small if this del l it becomes very 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 small you know to the point that there is no distinction between this region and this region so i am again putting laying blue layers here 
if del l becomes very very small there is not going to be any distinction between these two layers which means that that is the magnitude of heat that is entering through that region that is the magnitude of heat that is entering through this region so it just enters when del l becomes very small then we can rewrite this equation as a into dt temperature difference divided by it becomes very small dx right so it becomes that way right it becomes very small then the magnitude of heat that is entering through that region it becomes directly proportional to a into dt by dx when del l becomes very small it becomes dx don't think that this dx you know it is you may think that this dx is very is it is represented you know at a significant length but actually its length is very 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 small i have just represented it to your significant level just to get across the concept okay now if you want to eliminate a proportionality you have to introduce a constant and that constant is k it is k into a into dt by dx k into a into dt by dx uh, this is actually Fourier's law of heat conduction actually they used to put negative sign but let me let me suspend that negative sign for a while okay that is the magnitude of heat that is entering through that region now i can write the magnitude of heat that is getting out of this region the magnitude of heat that is getting out of this region so what would be that magnitude okay here we go let me take a fresh page so let me represent that here so this is the yellow region that is under investigation it has got a length dx i have considered a small region onto the right and a small region onto the left i have just worked out the equation for magnitude of heat that enters this region now the magnitude of heat that leaves this region q out that should be directly proportional to the temperature difference between this is t1 this is t2 maybe this is t3 this is t4 so that is directly proportional to, to the temperature difference t3 difference t4 and should should be directly proportional to the area and it should be inversely proportional to the length so in a similar note when the length becomes very small then this equation becomes a into dt by dx you know at this region at this region so maybe you can call this region so at this region right so maybe you can call this region as i will use a different color maybe a green one one that is that represents the magnitude of heat that en enters through one one and this equation here represents the magnitude of heat that is leaving two 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 okay so if you want to eliminate the proportionality of course you have, should have introduced a constant and that constant is k k thermal conductivity so that is for section 2 2 okay now what is the magnitude of heat that is lost due to convection from the small region that you have considered so this is the small region maybe i have to use lo this is the small region that you have considered and from this small region heat is lost due to convection and what is the magnitude of heat that is lost due to convection so i'm going to write the equation just watch out the magnitude of heat that is lost due to convection due to convection so that is you know it is directly proportional to you know the surface area so you know the surface area would look something like this let me try my best to represent it in a three-dimensional way sorry about the poor diagram but what is the surface area the surface area is nothing but the perimeter into this length dx so the amount magnitude of heat that is lost due to convection is directly proportional to the surface area which is perimeter capital p here stands for perimeter into the length dx and it is also directly proportional to the temperature difference between this point look for the blue here the temperature difference between this point which is t and the atmospheric temperature the ambient temperature ta so it is also directly proportional to t difference ta that t here is the temperature at the region that you are concentrating your attention on you may ask me this question 
uh, where you want to consider the temperature at the center well it is already a small portion if you want you can take the average of these two temperatures that would be the temperature at the center but it, that is that is calculus essentially right so this is the equation that gives you the heat that is lost due to convection but we have to eliminate the proportionality sign so if you eliminate the proportionality sign the equation that you are going to get is the amount of heat that is lost due to convection q that is lost due to convection is equal to the proportionality constant is h into capital p into t difference ta into dx that is the magnitude of heat that is lost due to convection so i'm just i'll just write the statement it is the magnitude of heat that is lost due to convection okay now <clears throat> again this is the small region that we have considered do you think there is heat generated within the small region by some source in actual practice if it is a pin fin that is dissipating the heat then heat is not generated within this region but what i am saying here is that suppose if electricity is passing through a wire for example then heat can be generated so we are trying to derive a general equation so let us say that q can, maybe i will use capital q here maybe that would be conducive so so let us say that q is the magnitude of heat that is generated per unit volume so what is the volume here is perimeter you know area into dx that is the volume so if q is the magnitude of heat is that is generated per unit volume unit volume then what would be the magnitude of heat that is generated for the small value volume that is a into dx right what would be the magnitude of heat that is generated you just have to cross multiply so the magnitude of heat that is generated right heat that is generated in this small region is equal to q that is generated per unit volume into a into dx that is the magnitude of heat that is generated in the small region okay here we go again you've got the small region the amount of heat that is coming in it is q suffix n there is heat that is going out it is q out and the heat that is lost due to convection so key q convection and the magnitude of heat that is stored that is q generated the magnitude of heat that is generated now i'm going to write the equation for heat stored what would be the equation for heat stored the magnitude of heat that is stored in this region will be equal to q suffix n the magnitude of heat that is coming in and whatever heat that is lost the heat that is lost is due to convection whatever heat that is coming in is actually lost due to convection some of some quantity is lost due to convection and some quantity is going out that is q out and you know whatever heat that is coming in on top of that some magnitude of heat is generated within the system so we have to add that so it is plus q that is generated okay now all i have to do is i have got an equation for heat that is coming in i've got an equation for heat that is lost due to convection and i have got an equation for heat heat that is going out and i have got an equation for heat that is generated so let me write those equations heat that is coming in that is equal to k into a into dt by dx at the point one one you have this equation here uh, right here yes and the magnitude of heat that is going out you have the equation right here so let me represent that minus this equation here this equation it is k into a into dt by dx at 2 2 right and you have got an equation for heat that is lost due to convection for this part you have an equation so that is 
H into P into T minus TA into DX. And you have got an equation for heat that is generated within the system. That is, here we go, Q into A into DX. It is Q into A into DX. Now I'm going to make an assumption. That assumption is what if the quantity of heat that is stored becomes zero. So whatever heat that is pumped in, the assumption is whatever heat that is pumped in, that is pumped out, right? There is no heat stored within the small region. Then what happens to this equation, right? Let me do that here, okay? The next step, this equation, if you look very carefully, this heat stored becomes zero. What is this K? As far as these two terms are concerned, I can take K into A, a constant that I can take it outside. And you see DT difference, DT at region 1, 1 difference DT at region 2, 2. For infinitesimally small region, that equation is nothing but KA into change in change in temperature, right? It is DT at 1, 1 difference dt at 2 2 of course mathematicians will definitely will not allow me to write this way but anyway the common term in the denominator is dx so that is what these this equation represent minus hp into t minus ta into dx plus q into a plus q into a into dx that should be equal to zero okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide the denominator by a into dx so dividing both the right hand side and the left hand side by a into dx in that way i do no damage to this equation the equations are going to be intact so what is that I'm going to get? K into A into, of course, I'm dividing by A. So what happens is, here we go. It is K into A into, change in change in temperature is nothing but D squared T. That is what change in change in temperature, right? Of course, I will be dividing by A. So I should not be putting this A. Okay, divided by a into dx dx into dx since you are dividing it becomes dx square so that becomes k into dx d square t by dx square minus hp divided by a into t minus ta of course dx dx go, goes away plus if you divide by a into dx it becomes plus q is equal to zero that is the governing differential equation of one dimensional heat transfer problem now, in the next session, we are going to solve this governing differential equation, right? And if you can solve this governing differential equation, then you can find the value of temperature. There is one point that I would like to emphasize here. You might have missed that. The assumption that we have made in this particular problem is when you have got a heat source, there is a pin fin attached. The assumption that you have made is you have to assume that this end is insulated. If the end is not insulated, there can be heat lost due to convection also, then you also have to take that into account. So when you actually do the finite element formulation, you have to derive the stiffness matrix for end convection. So usually people assume the end to be insulated. If it is not insulated and there is heat transfer, then we have to find the stiffness matrix to do convection, end convection also. So here we have got the governing differential equation of one dimensional heat transfer problem. In the next video, we are going to see how to solve this governing differential equation by using Galerkin's weighted residual method. Thank you all for your patience. Radiate hope and do amazing work. Thank you.